Anticipation is building for the Stars season opener coming up on Thursday. Today on the show, I'm joined by Dallas Stars senior staff writer Mike Heike to talk about the expectations for this team for this season based on what happened during training camp. We have a lot of exciting things to talk about on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis. It is uh, Wednesday, October 13th. (laughs) My days are getting confused Um, and I'm just getting excited for hockey season and excited to have um, a very special guest on today's show, senior staff writer for the Dallas Stars, Mike Heike, who is currently on the ground in New York City in preparation for game one for the Dallas Stars versus the New York Rangers. Mike, how are you? Doing good. I just had to turn my TV off. It was changing all the lights and everything. (laughs) That's okay. Uh, Lighting changes can can keep the audiences engaged, you know, keep keep (laughs) people going. That's true. Um, but yeah, like I said, Mike has uh, been covering the stars for Mike. How long have you been been covering the stars for as the writer? <laughs> well, technically, I started in '93 before they actually came here. I went up to Minnesota, and then they came down. Then the first year, they gave it to an older beat writer. I was at the Fort Worth Star Telegram, and then in '94, uh, I started covering them full time and have covered them ever since. Awesome. So you so you've uh, you've seen the stars go through their fair shares of ups and downs and been through the, the highs and lows of their time here in Dallas. Um, so definitely a lot of insight and a lot of wisdom, uh, I imagine, comes with that job. And so just wanted to run through some questions uh, with you about training camp and kind of the preseason, um, because training camp was closed off to the public and only a few select members of the media were able to be in attendance. Um, and so thankfully, we do have Mike here to kind of give us maybe <laughs> some inside uh, the inside scoop and some inside outlook on this upcoming season. And kind of the first thing I want to talk about, Mike, is what kind of seemed to be the focal point for the Stars during this training camp? Like, what was the coaching staff looking to accomplish after last season missing out on the postseason? There were, you know, a lot of the drills obviously had to do with compete, uh, physical battles, uh, also uh, just repetition uh, to get the uh, passing down with the uh, – it's funny that I think they, you know – even today on the flight, I'm going to go, oh, look, there's a new guy. Oh, there's a new guy. Uh, <laughs> there, you know, th- Ryan Suter's here. Yanni Hockenpah's here. Uh, Raffle, uh, Glenn Denning. Uh, there's just some different faces in here. Jacob Peterson. And so those guys had to work hard to find their spots and to find the rhythm that they wanted to have going forward. So the addition of Suter is going to change the top four on defense. So then Suter and Klingberg, had to get their rhythm going, and then Lindell and Haskinen had to get their rhythm going. Um, up on the uh, uh, lo- top lines, Jamie Benn played some left wing with Sagan and Radulov, and he played center with Giryanov and an assortment of wingers. So things of that nature, I think, were the big key for them. Um, they're still <laughs> – every day is a question mark with this team. Uh, <laughs> there's still adjustments that have to be made. We don't know if Jamie will – play left wing with Tyler on Thursday night or whether he'll center his own line. Um, you don't know if Hawk and Powell will be in the lineup or, or if Joel Hanley will get a, an opportunity. And we still don't know who the starting goalie will be. So there was a lot they had to figure out, and they keep telling us they have it figured out. So we'll see <laughs> Thursday. Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of competition, which I think is a good yeah. thing for Stars fans to, to know that that's happening, that, that there is intense care being put towards establishing this lineup. What would you say was, um, at least for you, kind of from your perspective, what was the most interesting uh, like position battle, if you will, to watch? Like, or what guys were the most fun to watch compete during camp, whether it was a new guy that we got in free agency or even some of the younger guys that um, have maybe been loaned back to the Texas Stars or their junior club teams? For this year, Jacob Peterson, I think, is was the most dynamic um, player personality, uh, a guy who really I think they expected, uh, they brought three players over from Sweden. I think they expected them all to play a full season in the AHL. Uh, And we've seen that previously with Essel and Dell and Rope Hint and Dennis Kirianov. Um, And so uh, Jacob Peterson just came out and said, no, I I think I can play here in the NHL. And um, and he he looked really good. Um, It's interesting just watching how the European players have to adapt to the smaller space and the and the quicker action and the more physical play of the NHL. And that's, you know, the big reason why they need to be in the HL for a year. But
but Peterson's really smart and he just reads plays. He understands things. Uh, I will say this about Jason Robertson too. The puck just follows him around. Like he knows where it's going to be. And it's just an innate skill. I think uh, where he has a, a real understanding of where the puck's going to be before it's there. Uh, and that's a very helpful thing. Uh, so the fact that he played with Sagan uh, in a couple of the preseason games uh, is is a really good sign for him. And with Robertson uh, going to miss Thursday night, uh, it looks like Jacob Peterson will be, you know, man in the left wing. Well, no, I guess Ben will be up there. But he could be playing left wing with uh, uh, Hintz and uh, Pavelski. Uh, oh, wow. So, yeah, so he, he really has an opportunity to make an impact early on. Absolutely. That that would be a really fun storyline to follow. Uh, yeah. I, I hadn't noticed that. I knew that Jason Robertson was uh, potentially going to miss, but I guess now we know uh, we'll be missing Thursday as well. As I know Ben Bishop is still on IR as well. Um, and kind of you, you mentioned the goalkeeper position a little bit earlier. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of discuss, discussion, speculation um, about Anton Hudob and Braden Holtzby. Uh, and, and, you know, who's going to be starting on Thursday? And we still don't know, as you said. And, you know, both had pretty solid preseasons overall. But just kind of from your perspective, uh, who do you think kind of outperformed the other? Who do you think kind of showed that they belong to start on Thursday uh, for the Dallas Stars in the net? Holtby had the more consistent camp uh, in preseason. Uh, Hudobin started a little bit rough. Um, so I, I would say if I'm guessing, it, it'll be Holtby in net against the Rangers. Um, and then who knows from there? Uh, I really do feel this is a read and react position this year. And if you have a good game, there's a chance you go right back in. Uh, if you have a bad game, there's a chance that you get let the other guy start. And then if he gets a good game or three, then you're sitting out for three. Um, it really, truly will be a 50-50 split, I believe, uh, based on performance uh, with Holpe and Hudobin. Uh, Ottinger will go to the minors and eat up all the minutes there. Uh, and Ben Bishop, I don't know when he'll be ready. Um, in addition to his knee uh, being able to withstand competition, uh, they have some cap issues uh, because Ben will probably go on long-term IR. Uh, he makes $4.9 million as far as a cap hit goes. And so then to clear that space to get him back on the roster, they pretty much need to tra trade either uh, Hudobin or Holtby. And my guess is that'll be a decision that's made three, four months down the line. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, the, the goalie position has just been such an interesting discussion throughout this camp and preseason for that reason. Just the fact that you have Ben Bishop, who has shown flashes of greatness, and Hudobin and Holtby, who have done the same things, and even Ottinger, um, currently back down at the AHL level with the Texas Stars, who honestly was one of the bright spots for the team last season, filling um, the role of kind of backup goalkeeper to Anton Hudobin. Um, so it should be a lot of fun, and uh, or I say fun, hopefully fun is the right <laughs> word for that, to see how the, the position battle unfolds throughout the season. And maybe one guy will really establish himself as as the guy and will and we'll hold um, you know capital there for, for the majority of the season. Uh, we'll, we'll be continuing. Or, oh, what was, was that? You also, and I, I don't know why I think this is actually possible. You also could have them both play well. And if That's they true. both play well, and let's say Dallas is first or second in the division, then they can let Ben Bishop rest for months um, because – they're winning games. And that's really the key to all this. As long as they're winning games, then they don't really have to do anything different. And then Jake, I think, in, in the minors uh, will be a good thing because that's going to be a really good AHL team. And, and I think he's, he's going to ring up some victories and, and hopefully some pretty good uh, statistics along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Best case scenario, Hedobin and, and Holtby both play really, really well. And we know uh, that both of those guys are capable of it and have done mm -hmm. it in the past. It's just a matter of you know, if it'll carry over to this season and if they can win games and, and be consistent. Uh, but should be a lot of fun to watch as the season unfolds. But we'll get to continue this conversation uh, with Mike here in a few minutes. But before we do that, I want to take a moment and thank Built Bar for sponsoring today's episode. Did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorite flavors. And the flavors that Built Bar offers, uh, there's a lot of variety. And here are the flavors that they offer for you to order today on their website. They have coconut, Cherry Barcia, Raspberry, Mint Brownie, Double Chocolate, Salted Caramel, Strawberry, Orange, Cookies and Cream, and German Chocolate. Not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting and the most delicious, but they're also good for you too. They have 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories that range from 130 to 180, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. You can go to built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. 
Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Jumping back into this conversation with senior staff writer for the Dallas Stars, Mike Heike, um, just kind of covering some expectations for the team this season. Um, and, we, and we obviously touched on a little bit ago um, talking about Peterson for the Stars. But Mike, who is a guy, um, you know, obviously we know the big names on the team like Sagan, Ben, Pavelski, Hintz, Radulov, you name it. Um, but who are, who's maybe a guy that Stars fans uh, maybe know about um, but don't necessarily uh, you know, have strong feelings for. They're just kind of there. You know, they've been an average performer in the past, or maybe they just don't know the name that well yet. Obviously, Peterson's one of those guys. Um, but who's a guy that kind of had a really big camp that you think could have um, a sort of breakout season this year and really take a lot of people by surprise? Um, I don't think it'll take people by surprise, but Dennis Garianov seems ready. Uh, when you watch what Rope did last year, I mean, he was a point of game guy while he's dealing with his injury. Um, and then Jason Robertson stepped up and, and scored the points that he did. Um, it just seems that Dennis is in a place where he's ready to do the same thing. So I think he'll be one guy to really watch for big numbers. Uh, the other guy is Yanni Hockenpah. Uh We haven't seen him play one minute of preseason, and yet everybody is buzzing about him. They like him. They like his size. They like the right-handed shot. Um, when you look back now, the fact that they got Ryan Suter and Hockenpah. Uh, to replace Jamie Alexiak, they really should be better, deeper on defense. And then you add guys like uh, Petrovic, uh, who should start in the minors. He may be here, but he should start in the minors. And and you really are pretty deep on defense. Uh, so having Hockenpah there, I think, was, is going to be a good thing. And then, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure the uh, fantasy players are are pondering a, a late pick of Dennis Kirianov, and it might be a good move. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it should be exciting to see a guy as talented as Garyanov. It looks like he was kind of playing or will be playing third third line minutes. Is that correct? Kind of based I on what's been so. happening. I camp. mean, they're going to juggle around and and those third line minutes will. Rick Bonus has said several times that if Jamie Ben is playing center, he wants him to get his minutes. And so if Jamie Ben's getting his minutes and Dennis Garyanov's next to him, then Dennis Garyanov should be getting his minutes too. Uh, so it'll be interesting just to see how they deploy things. Um, there's a thought process that um, uh, Hintz will go against the other team's best player, uh, you know, and so that would kind of be the checking line. Uh, but then Rick wants everybody to check. Uh, so a lot will depend on score. A lot will depend on how much special teams. If they get power plays, Dennis will be out there a lot. Uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely think as much as you can, you know, call him third line, uh, there's a chance he's going to he's going to have a lot more minutes and a lot more opportunities this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited to watch Dennis play. And he's been a fun guy to watch over the past few years. Yeah. But like you said, I don't think too many Stars fans will be taken by surprise, but maybe um, a few other just casual NHL fans or fans of other teams might yeah. get to know the name Dennis, which will be really exciting. Uh, and another, another guy that I know kind of has high expectations because of a new contract. Um, what do you think kind of or how, how is Miro Haskin looked at camp? And then what do you think um, the expectations should be for him this season with his new contract that he's just signed? It's really hard just because even when he was drafted, um, the scout said Miro's ahead of the game defensively, but needs to catch up offensively. And, you know, we saw in the bubble where he was fantastic. And then we saw a big step back last season in terms of points. Um, the fact that, that Essa, uh, will be his, his uh, partner now. Uh, Jamie Alexiak didn't mind taking off. Uh, in fact, was told to take off. They all are. Uh, but I just don't think S is going to do that much. And so then you'll look at Haskinen, and I think you're going to see him take a few more chances. Uh, even on the power play, he's playing more the the floater role, the, the rover. Um, and so I think you could see him try and be more creative in that regard, where he slides down to the half wall or even goes behind the net. Uh, things he wouldn't normally do on a power play. Uh, so it's it's going to be a really intriguing year. Uh, I don't think the money affects him that much. Uh, he, he, you know, everybody obviously is going to say, oh, it's great to get this contract. But I don't even know that he was worried about it when he didn't have it. Uh, so now that he has it, I think he's just going to, you know, put his nose to the grindstone and try and make himself the best player it can be. Yeah, I, I hope that that's what happens. And uh, you know, obviously hope he would perform regardless of the money. But now, like you said, you know, he has the money now. And so yeah. uh, has the contract signed. And I think that, you know, eases the mind of Stars fans to know that we have such a gifted player here for um, the foreseeable future. Um, a guy that we can hopefully build around, especially as far as defensemen go, just with um, some older guys on the roster at the defenseman position. 
Um, and we'll, we'll kind of jump into some, some final questions on today's episode. Um, but before we do that, I want to thank another sponsor of today's episode of Locked on Stars, and that is Bet Online. Bet Online is back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With the new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Jumping back into the conversation that we're having today with Mike Heike, um, kind of just covering some preseason, or I guess before the season starts, expectations for the Dallas Stars before they play their first game on Thursday against the New York Rangers. Uh, Mike, I want to take a quick question and uh, take a quick moment, rather, and ask you a question about how you think the Stars will fare in the Central Division. I mean, kind of how far you think that they'll go, uh, you know, in, in terms of playing in what I think and what many think is probably the toughest division in the NHL this season. Yeah, and, and I think one of the most unpredictable, too, because uh, you look at Chicago and you think they're getting Taves back. They they got Seth Jones. They, they're going to be better. Um, you, you look at Minnesota and you're like, well, are they going to be better? Did they lose these players? <laughs> Are they taking the next step? Um, uh, yeah, I think Winnipeg is going to be good. St. Louis is a real wild card. Uh, they looked like they had their moments in the uh, in the preseason game against Dallas. Uh, so it, it really is unpredictable. Uh, I think it's going to be very close. Uh, I would guess somewhere around third for Dallas. I think Winnipeg and Colorado might be ahead of them. Um, and then once they get into the playoffs, here's my theory. My theory is that Jim Nill has really built this team to be good in the playoffs. And so they may suffer injuries during the regular season. The goaltending may be a little wonky at times, but if they get through all this and if they get to a place where they're pretty healthy going into the playoffs, I think that they think that they'll be a really hard out. You know, guys like Luke Glendening, guys like uh, Ryan Suter, um, uh, even Michael Raffles looked really good. Uh, and then if, it, you know, I think this is what they really want. If Ben Bishop is healthy, and is ready to play in the playoffs, they feel that if he's healthy and playing well, he's a top five goalie. His numbers say when he was healthy, the previous four or five seasons, he was a top five goalie. So if you add a top five goalie and your defense is deeper and you have Rope Hintz and Jason Robertson who have come off big years and Tyler Sagan and Alexander Radulov are getting healthy, all of it makes sense that if they get this group to the playoffs in a good place, that they really could contend against anybody. Um, so that's the thing. I, I would think third would be a good pick, uh, but it really could go. I think Colorado is a hands down favorite, but then Winnipeg, Dallas, St. Louis, uh, Chicago, Minnesota. Uh, I do believe five teams will make it out of the central because I just don't think the Pacific's that strong. Uh, so you can make the playoffs, I believe, in the fifth spot. And then we'll see. Uh, it's going to be fun. I will. Everything leads to everybody beating each other up. And I think that can be fun. I mean, you can have a lot of good games of every night. You know, if Chicago's playing Minnesota, if Dallas is playing Winnipeg, um, it'll be a good game. And I think that'll be fun for the fans. Absolutely. I, I 100 percent agree. I love, love that you said all that. And even yesterday I was I was doing some, you know, like preseason projections for the central division. And it was like easy to put, you know, Colorado easy projected favorites when the division Arizona pretty easy to project that they'll be at the bottom. And then that, you know, that two through seven spot was, was a challenge for sure. Yeah. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. And and I totally agree with what you said that, you know, as long as this team can make the postseason, anything can happen. And we clearly saw that in the bubble in Edmonton. Uh, I mean, I don't think a lot of people had Dallas making it all the way to the cup no. finals, uh, you know, and, and, you know, they made it not without, you know, their their trials and tribulations to get there. And uh, I think that's the nice part about the team this season is that this a lot of the guys on this team are veterans or, you know, even if they're younger guys, that they've gone through their fair share of of trouble and, you know, fighting some uphill battles. And so, if anything, I don't think uh, that it'll be, you know, it, I think that they can make the playoffs just because that they have, you know, the fight in them to do so because they've already been through so much. And a lot of these guys have played together for a while. And so there's just that, team chemistry that you know you can't you can't coach that you know that's just built over time 
um, through things that teams go through together. Um, so really excited to see how this team kind of molds and, and builds their identity as the season goes on. Um, and, and I think a really important way that that'll be formed, kind of the last question I have here um, to talk more, I guess, smaller picture. That was a more broad picture question. Um, what what do you think um, the stars like preparations have been or have you seen any preparation or emphasis on um, focusing on playing their first eight of 11 games on the road? Has there been a lot of talk about that um, from the coaching staff or the players or is it just kind of like business as usual? They're playing hockey and so they're just happy to be playing playing the game or is there kind of an emphasis on, you know, playing well on the road to start the season? Yeah, well, I think Rick and Jim Nell and, and Scott White, all of them talk about every single element. And so, yeah, this this first four games on the road, they've talked a lot about it and being prepared and how they're going to use their lineup and how they're going to use their depth. And I think the fact that Robertson and Como aren't going to be in the opener does throw a, a wrench into the works because, you know, they may have wanted to go into game three with a couple of fresh legs. Uh, they may still try to do that, but it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but they talk about all of that stuff. And like I said, when I say their plan to be good in the playoffs, I think when you look at the signing of Braden Holtby, that was a big part of it, that we got to get to the playoffs. We don't know when Ben might be ready. You know, we like Jake, but, you know, we would love to have two guys who have experience. Anton went to the finals uh, a year ago, technically, but two seasons ago. And then Holtby did the same thing for Washington. And so they have that experience. So basically the plan is when we get to the playoffs, which is a big if, but when we get to the playoffs, we will have a goalie who won't be flustered by the situation. Now, whether that's Ben Bishop, whether that's Anton Hudobin, whether that's Braden Holtby, you know, they'll be prepared. And so I, I use that example of that's how they think all the time. They think about who's coming on this trip. You know, who's going to be ready in Texas? How, you know, what happens if someone gets hurt in New York? Uh, or what happens as we're trying to get some guy into Ottawa with all the COVID restrictions? They go through all of that stuff. So it, it is interesting just to watch how they prepare and how detailed they are and how they try to leave no stone unturned. Um, they really are. They, they work very hard at trying to be prepared. Absolutely. And I, that's encouraging to hear. I know for me, and I'm sure the, the Stars fans listening as well, to know that there is thought being put into everything. Um, just with, you know, we're not, like you said, not completely out of the woods yet on um, this pandemic. And so, you know, there could be travel restrictions or guys that have to stay in certain cities. Um, and certainly the Stars won't be the only teams that have, won't, the only team that has to deal with that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this NHL season shapes out uh, just with that and with guys adjusting to the full schedule again and not playing you know, the same teams over and over and over and getting to, you know, because some of these younger guys probably yeah. haven't traveled to some of these cities or gone on these really long road trips. I mean, Dallas starting, you know, four games on the road, you know, the guys probably haven't done that in a while. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, who who's prepared and who, you know, comes out flat. Uh, but of course, you know, we've seen the stars start, start slow before, but um, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. And if they can make the playoffs, I think that anything can happen. And uh, it's going to be an exciting season. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm really fired up. I mean, the like I keep saying, they got the hunger from going to the Stanley Cup final. And they got the belief that hey, we can do this. Guys like Pavelski, Ben, uh, Sagan, Klingberg. I mean, these guys didn't have a ton of uh, playoff games. Pavelski and, and Sagan obviously did, but guys here, Ben, uh, Klingberg didn't have that experience. Well, now they do, and then they have the hunger and the anger for missing the playoffs last year. So I do think that's an interesting mix of emotions that are going through and you know it's hard to keep that up for 82 games but they really do seem to be a team that's very hungry right now yeah absolutely and, and i think uh, that that's a good thing and that they'll be able to feed off that all season um, and i know that i'm excited i'm sure you're excited and the stars fans everywhere wherever they're watching from um, are going to be excited to see how far this team goes this season but that's gonna that's gonna do it for today's episode of locked on stars uh thank you for tuning into the show um, be sure to tune in tomorrow as we'll be covering uh, the, the game against the New York Rangers. We'll be talking about some matchups to look out for there um, and what to expect for tomorrow's season opener for the Dallas Stars. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. Mike, where can uh, the Stars listeners find you on social media or, or anywhere else if they're not already, which I imagine it's most mostly, of them probably are. I'm mostly on Twitter. It's at Mike Heike. Uh, so very simple. Uh, Perfect. What do you? What's in your background there, Dane? I'm trying to put my glasses on. Uh, what? 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 What specifically? <laughs> oh, Texas, USA. So that's, is that the stars thing or is that just Texas? It's just the Texas thing. It's a, uh, okay. I think I, 
I can't even remember where I got it now. I think I ordered a shirt, like a Texas themed shirt, and it came with it. So I'm well, in the I'm in the process of trying. Their hashtag is Texas Hockey now because they it is the entire state. So I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's that's perfectly fitting. It's like they read my mind. So <laughs> yes, right. The, Are you read the Stars yeah. management knew. So I'm in <laughs> I'm in the process of trying to get some Stars themed things as well. Uh, but Mike, thank you for joining the show. I appreciate it. And I know the Stars fans appreciate your insight as well. Uh, safe travels to you guys as y'all are on this four game road trip. Uh, hopefully y'all are able to enjoy it and have a, have a good time as a, you know, the team and the organization. But again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Dane. And your show is great. Uh, I, I know all the way back from Josh, it's a, it's a great place for Stars fans to get information. Yeah. Josh, Josh and Kenneth have both spoken very highly of you. So always an honor to have you on the show and hopefully we can have you back. Uh, sometime in the future. But Stars fans, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you back here tomorrow.